ora, I'm Hera and welcome to my kitchen. I love to cook and I love to eat good food. Oh man, if only you could taste this. Cooking for me is all about farming. All my siblings cook putai fritters and everybody has that secret recipe. But as a mum, when life gets crazy busy, all I want is delicious kai that's simple and easy to make. I'm about to demystify and uncomplicate cooking. Recreating restaurant quality dishes right from my kitchen. I'm all about Hedda's hard and fast recipes. The prep is nice and easy. And just like that, the girls would never know that I only took five minutes to put this together. Because simple doesn't have to mean boring. Yum. In each episode, I'll be cooking up four of my favourite dishes for you to try at home. I'm using real food, ingredients you can find at any supermarket, even in pack and save in Kaitaia, or kai that has been foraged or caught from the land and sea. I'll share with you my tips and tricks Cheers. to take the stress out of cooking. This is Easy Eats. Kei tēnei hōtaka. I make my signature Asian-inspired soup, Hainanese chicken. Good way to keep a man know how to cook. I share with you my auntie's special Madeira cake recipe. It is my favourite above every other cake. The easiest focaccia to save you time in the kitchen. Looks delicious. And what's bread without something to dunk it into? I make the ultimate baked snapper. This is something definitely that I make for my whole whanau. I'm grateful they're not here today because I get to eat all of this all by myself. Oh, that is a party in your mouth. Today's dish that we're going to be making is Hainanese chicken. And it's my favourite dish because I love eating Asian food. And I also wanted to recreate something that I always go out and order. Something simple, something easy and in my kitchen. Using these minimal ingredients, this soup is full of flavour and easy enough to whip up in less than 30 minutes for the whole whānau to enjoy. So the first thing that we're going to do is that I'm going to grate my ginger and my garlic. Now, we could be really flash and peel the ginger, but my grandmother has always told me that the best flavours are in the skin. So we're just going to go ahead and grate it with the skin. Grate some garlic too. I'm going to add my ginger and garlic, some peppercorns, and grind it with a pestle and mortar. So if you don't have a pestle or mortar at home, what I genuinely tend to use is um, just a bowl in the bottom of a cup. Just sit there and you crush it, because every marae has a bowl and definitely has a cup. Once your garlic, ginger and peppercorns start forming a paste, you're ready to fry. Great, that's plenty. This is definitely where the magic happens. It's time to create some beautiful hoopa. I'm going to get some oil in there. A little bit of oil. No, I'm lying, a lot of oil. When you cook, you must taste, you must smell. Use all your senses as you're cooking because you'll see as we go throughout this dish that I will never measure. Oh, that sound, that sizzle. Exactly what I want to hear. Now, this is something new for myself and my family. My husband and I didn't really eat a lot of spicy food, but we found in our older age we've gotten to acquire spicy flavours. So, each to their own. You add as much as you like or as less as you like. While the chicken is browning, make your stock. I haven't got time to muck around, so I just use pre-made stock and add boiling water. Like I said, I will never measure. I'm just going off a look. I know exactly what I want my stock to look like. That looks ready to me. Now let's see how the chicken's going. As we all know, you must absolutely cook chicken right through. It's got to be cooked to perfection. But for this particular recipe, to get it to perfection, we're just browning it off and we're going to add the stock and it's going to poach. So the poaching method allows it to cook right through and you'll be able to see that as we go on. Add the stock, soy sauce and our secret ingredient. Now I know star anise is not really something that we all have in our cupboards, but you can get it anywhere, even in pack and save in Kaitaia. 
add five to seven pods and cook for around 30 minutes, which is enough time to get the rest of your ingredients ready. Grab yourself a glass of wine. Cut the ends of the bok choy and give it a quick wash in a bowl of water. Now you can tell when bok choy is cooked because it turns into like a darker green and it's absolutely beautiful. Next, add noodles to boiling water with a drop of oil and cook. Now, another tip as well, when you're taking off the lid and there's lots of steam, what I tend to do is to blow. By blowing, it pushes the steam away so I'm able to get into my pots without being burnt. Yeah, that chicken is looking delicious. You can tell that it's tenderizing, it's poaching really well, it's so soft. I can literally put this wooden spoon through it, so we are almost there. Once the bok choy has changed in color, remove it from the heat along with the noodles. See, there goes my blowing action. See, we're resourceful, because you know, lids can be used for all sorts of things. Not only does it cover, but it is now a plate. Wai ho te hei hei ki te taha mō tētahi wāpoto ki a pai tō tango i te hupa. This is where all the flavours come from, all of that. That's our ginger, that's our garlic, our star anise. Beautiful. Now it's time for plating. This is the exciting part. This is where you see whether you've poached it right. Oh. Yeah, she's beauty. Chicken perfectly cooked. You need to make sure all the juices run clear before adding to your soup. So we're just gonna move that to the side. Let's get ready to plate. All right, now we're gonna add this beautiful broth, stock, juice, hooper, whatever you wanna call it. Got my beautiful ladle, AKA the mug. Some spring onion. Have to add some more chilli. And an Asian dish is never complete without coriander. This flavouring right here. Just slowly add some over the chicken. And this is my take on Asian Hainanese chicken. There's no better way to do this but to get stuck in and look, it ain't going to be pretty, but I'm hoping it's going to be great. Mm. It's fantastic, I must say so myself. It's a good way to keep a man know how to cook. If I up in May, we get on to our tasty baked snapper. If I was to be any food in the world, I would be a freshly baked loaf of bread. The smell of it going through your fuddy. Oh my gosh, it reminds me of home and it reminds me of my mum. Bread is something that has always been part of our lives. My mum is the queen of making bread. So today we're gonna make a quick and easy dough that we're able to use in multiple ways. The key or the secret to this dough is definitely lukewarm water. So we're going to add that into our bowl. We're going to add our yeast, which is our rising agent, never measuring. Now, that much looks about good. And the final step, only because I like my bread just a little bit sweet, I'm going to add some sugar. Now we're gonna give that a stir. And mum always said to me, when making your bread, you make it with love because you'll definitely be able to taste it. That's about perfect. So I'm going to cover my dough with a tea towel. We're going to put it in a warm place in the fuddy, and we're going to allow it to rise for 20 to 30 minutes. And what we're looking for is beautiful white bubbles froth or foam to come that halfway. Oh, 
Oh, it's about time, so we're going to check it out, see how it looks. You beauty. That's about mummy right, right there. Before I do any bread making, the first thing I do is always take off my jewellery. You do not want to lose your rings in there. So we're going to add some flour. Now this is just plain flour. It's going to give our yeast a bit of a stir. We're going to tip some flour in. As you can see, I don't sift my flour in because that's what kneading does. We're going to use the kneading method to do all the mixing. To this mixture, we're just going to continue to keep adding flour until we get the perfect consistency. Right, I'm just going to switch out my wooden spoon, only because I've always made this bread with a fork and so has mum. So we want to do our dough thick enough so that I can get my hands in, but not too runny. Add more flour to your dough until you get the right consistency. So that's definitely at a point to get my hands in. Add a little more flour to the board before we knead the dough to prevent it from sticking. So this is quite a big mixture, and trust you me, I have done way bigger than this, but this is definitely enough to feed a whanau. Okay, this is about almost ready to go back into our bowl. Cover and then leave it for an hour somewhere warm to rise again. Right, let's check this dough out. That has risen to perfection. It is so beautiful, so light, so fluffy. Back in my younger days, or well not, not too far back, I remember going to a cafe in Kaitaia with my sister, ready to order my kai. I look up at the board and I said to her, can I please have a whakachia? Only to find out that it was focaccia. So we're now going to get into making focaccia bread. We're going to add a little more flour to the board and oil our hands so the dough doesn't stick. More oil to the side of the dough and I'm going to use this part of my hand to pick my dough up. And just like that, we're going to add it to our board, start getting our shape. You don't want to work it too much, you just want to get in there and make it happen. So I'm just going to use my fingertips just to press into the bread or into the dough. I'm going to add a little bit of rock salt just for that texture, that nice crunchy texture, and it also looks great. Add rosemary and a little olive oil. I'm going to add our bread to that. Now our oven has been preheating on 180 degrees. This should take anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes to cook and you'll have the most amazing focaccia bread. This is something that I make for my whānau all the time. We're very blessed in the far north. We have snapper everywhere. We have a lovely spot in the Pāringaringa Harbour, which I'm not going to tell you, but my memories are my uncle taking all of us kids out on the barge, on the harbour, stingrays swimming underneath us, out goes the rod, and there you have it, snapper. This dish is a perfect way to use the whole fish and impress your guests. Not the best for your hips, but hey, a great recipe for the all-important dip. Now the snapper has already been scaled and gutted on both sides. You need a nice sharp knife. And the reason why I'm scoring is just that I want the flavours to come through. And being such a medium to large size fish or ika, you want to make sure that you're able to cook it all the way through. We're going to change our boards because I'm going to prepare the vegetables that are going to go into our ika, and you don't want your fish juices mixing with your vegetables. Tapa 
hia ngā ramikama. Me te aniana. So one tip for you when you're doing your onions, you fill your mouth up with a bit of water, swirl it around like this, it stops you from crying. Tapa hia hoki, here mana. So what we're going to do now, we're going to chuck all our vegetables together, we're going to add some seasoning and then our beautiful, beautiful secret ingredient, our cream. Just place them around. Don't be fussy with it because everything's going to mix in so well. I like to put some of the lemon slices into the puku just so that we can get it all nice and juicy. Tāpuri hia te tote. Chili flakes. Do not be shy with the butter. Some in that head, just don't tell anybody because that's where I'm going to be totoing my bread. And to that, lastly, our cream. Ane, korite mo te umu. So our snapper is ready, that butter and that cream is looking delicious. We're going to pull this baby out, we're going to plate up and I'm going to get into this. Crunchy, it's crispy. We're going to add our vegetables. Got our beautiful capsicums, that delicious cream and that butter, lemon those crunchy pieces on those onions. Oh, this is going to be so delicious. So this dish would not be complete without our focaccia bread. Looks delicious. That is going to be so so amazing to dip in toto into our sauce. And there you have it. Baked snapper with focaccia bread. Delicious baked snapper that combines my favourite parts of the land and sea. Fish and cream. One dish, no fuss, me tere kahuki. Oh, that is a party in your mouth. Going in with our bread. Good old Toto. Oh man, if only you could taste this. And that salt, that cream, and that butter. This is something definitely that I make for my whole whanau. I'm grateful they're not here today because I get to eat all of this all by myself. Make sure to pop any leftovers you may have in an airtight container and chill in the fridge. This is Easy Eats. Cooking food that not only looks great, but isn't short on taste either. Recipes that are delicious but uncomplicated. Meals that are easy to prepare for those times when life just takes over. So when you talk about cake, Madeira cake really is the last thing on people's mind. But for me, it is my favourite. It is right up there at the top above every other cake. I love Madeira cake. I love the lemon. I love the buttery goodness. All those components combining together and smelling that cooking in the house. Madeira cake. Yum. Lemon and butter are the stars of this recipe. Simple and super easy. This cake is my favourite with a hot cuppa. So we're going to start by mounting our butter. So there's about 250 grams of butter in there. And the beauty about Madeira cake is actually tasting the buttery goodness in that sponge. This is what makes that cake. And it's probably the whole reason why I absolutely love it. Kororitia kia rewa te pata katoa. 
add our beautifully mounted butter. That is buttery goodness right there. When you're mixing your sugar and your butter, mix it for a little bit so your butter cools down because when you add your eggs in, if it's too hot, you're going to end up with scrambled egg in your mixture and you do not want that. So I think that's good enough to go. Going to add two eggs. Basically what we're doing is we're adding all of our wet ingredients before we add all of our dry ingredients. That's looking good. I know it looks like a lot of milk, but see the thing with Madeira cake for me, it has to be done on a large scale. It's got to be cooked in a big roasting dish because the Fano all love it. To that, we're going to add our flour. Don't need to sift it, we're just going to get in there, get it mixing. Baking powder. And combine. Now for the star of the cake, lemon zest. Now whatever you do, do not throw this lemon away. Done the lemon rind, because you can always use the lemon juice, just to add that little kick at the end. All right, we're going to mix that all together. Smelling really good. And now that that's all mixed, we're going to grab our baking dish and get ready to put this baby into the oven. One of my other tips or tricks that I like to do is grab a paper towel. In the pot that you've mounted your butter in, if you grab that, use your paper towel, get the excess butter, and you're just going to grease the side of your roasting dish because not everybody has a non-stick dish, and this will help. So we're gonna bake this cake nice and slowly for about 40 minutes on 120 degrees. So our cake is cooked and cooled, and let me tell you how hard it was to resist not getting in there, cutting me up a hot piece of cake. Nevertheless, let's get this baby out. Look at that buttery goodness. I can still see the lemon rind in there, so you know it's gone right through the mixture. Now this is the part where the kids come running in and we all start scrapping out for which is the best piece. They tend to love the corners and the outsides, but for me, I love the middle, chunky part where all the meaty part is for me. So I'm gonna get in there, slice me up the best piece, and dress this baby up. You can never, ever have a tiny little corner on a Madeira cake. So normally you would see a Madeira cake with a white lemon icing or even a lemon syrup. But today we're going to keep it nice and simple. Dust with icing sugar. Yeah. A dollop of Greek yogurt. To break through the denseness of the butter. Now we're going to go in with some lemon rind. Some beautiful edible flowers or violas. And there you have it, Auntie's beautiful Madeira cake. So quick and so easy. Ka hore e tua atu i te kaputi, hei kīnaki i tēnei kiki rea karawatu. That lemon just adds the perfect balance of zest. The sponginess, the butter, and that Greek yogurt. This is literally my childhood on a plate. This definitely reminds me of us in the shed in Te Hapua, having a hot cuppa and eating your beautiful Madeira cake. Join me 
again next time for more quick and easy recipes for your whānau to enjoy. Hei kōnā!